YouTube! Welcome to Higher Math Solutions. This video tutorial will talk about factoring special polynomials, which includes difference of two squares and a perfect square trinomial. So let's talk about the perfect squares first. Perfect squares include 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so forth. A perfect square is when you multiply the number by itself. So this would be 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, so forth. Okay. So let's talk about a difference of two squares. That would be a squared minus b squared. A difference of two squares has two terms that are perfect squares with a minus sign in between. For example, 4x squared minus 25. These are two squares terms with a minus sign in between. So this would be a difference of two squares. Another example would be 36 minus 81y squared. That would be an example as well. But let's learn how to factor these. To factor a difference of two squares, you open two parentheses. One is a positive, one is a negative. You take the square root of A and put it in the first space. Then you take the square root of B and put it in your second space. So let's use an example. 4x squared minus 25. This is a difference of two squares. So I will open two parentheses. One's positive and one is negative. And I'm going to take the square root of the 4x squared, which is 2x, and put that in the first space. Then I'm going to take the square root of 25, which is 5, and put it in the second space. Let's do one more example. 16x squared minus 4. This example is a little bit harder because it has a greatest common factor. So first you always want to factor out the greatest common factors first. The greatest common factor between 16 and 4 is going to be 4. So I'm actually going to take out a 4 before I do anything else. So I write the 4 in the front and then I'm going to divide it out to get my remaining part of the terms. So 16 divided by 4 is 4. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now you look to see what is left over. I actually still have a difference of two squares. I have a subtraction. 4x squared is a perfect square, as is 1. So I can actually factor this again. So my answer will be 4. I'm going to open up two parentheses. One is positive and one is negative. I'm going to take the square root of my first term, which would be 2x, and put it in the first spot. And then I'm going to take the square root of 1, which is just 1, and put it in the second spot. So you need to make sure to check for the greatest common factor as well. So now let's talk about our second set of special polynomials, which is a perfect square trinomial. To identify a perfect square trinomial, you first look at your last term. It always has to be positive and c always has to be a perfect square. Not only that, whatever factors give this number to be a perfect square, if you add them together, it should also give you your b term. So for example, let's look at this one. I'm going to look at my last term. It is positive and 16 is a perfect square. 
The numbers that make 16 a perfect square are 4 times 4. And when I add 4 and 4 together, I get the 8. So this would be considered a perfect square trinomial. Another example would be this one. If I look at my last term, it is positive, and 100 is a perfect square. 10 times 10 gives you this number, and if I add 10 plus 10, I get my B term. So this would also be considered a perfect square. So let's learn how to factor these. This one really only requires one parentheses with the square on top because both factors are the same. You will put an X in the front and you will copy the sign that has the B term and then you would just take the square root of what C is. So let's do the first example. X squared plus 8X plus 16. I'm going to open a parentheses and put a square on top. I'll put an X here. I will copy down the plus sign and then the square root of 16, which is 4, goes here. So the factors would be x plus 4 squared. You could also write it as x plus 4 times x plus 4, which is the same thing as x plus 4 squared. Let's do one more example. This one's very similar to the example I gave you just a moment ago with one difference. I went ahead and changed this to a minus sign. This is still considered a perfect square. The last term is still positive and is a perfect square. So again, I'm going to open up one parentheses and put a square up top. I'll put an X in the front, but instead of a plus sign, this one has a minus sign, so I'm going to copy down whatever sign I have in front of the B term. And then the square root of 100, or the number that makes it a perfect square, is 10. And so I will write a 10 in that spot right there. And then I just factored a perfect square trinomial. Thank you for watching Higher Math Solutions. I will be posting videos weekly, so please subscribe. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them in the comment section.